I've been here for many years, but I've never dared talk about rules. Why? This country advocates freedom. Parents don't watch over their children. The children are free to do as they please. After I came to America, I took disciples, but I too didn't watch over them. I let them do what they pleased. They could go wherever they wanted. They could have things their own their own way. They were very independent. But in the Sutra Lecture Assembly, I have noticed that some people are just too independent, far more casual than is appropriate. It is said. If you don't use a compass and square, you can't make squares and circles. In Chinese, the characters for compass and square are combined to form a compound, compound, which means rules. If you don't use the compass, you won't get a perfect circle. If you don't use a square, the square you draw will end up rectangular or triangle. Today, then, in the Suragama Dharma Assembly, I am telling you not to be lazy. Listen to the sutras with a respectful attitude. It should be as if the Buddha himself were here speaking the Dharma. You shouldn't think this Dharma master lectures by telling stories and jokes as if he were attending, entertaining children. That's not really that way. If you can fathom the meaning of the things I say, you can become enlightened. If you can certify it to the fruition immediately, you can be certified to the fruition immediately. And all it takes is a genuine determination in seeking the drama, and it can happen. If you are sincere while you are listening to this section on the twenty-five centuries, you can become enlightened on the spot. That's because these twenty-five centuries have each made vows that they will help whoever studies their drama door to become enlightened. So put your mind on investigating the sutra. Sutra. Gavampati arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "I have mouth karma created from the a past offense. I slighted a shramana, and in life after life, I've had this cow cut sickness." Commentary: Gavampati's name is Sanskrit and means a cow cut. You see, when cows sleep, they snore and their tongues. Flap back and forth, making a terrible racket. Gavampati arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "I have mouth karma created from a past offense. What kind of mouth karma did he create? Once he noticed an old shramana who was toothless, taking a long time to eat. Gavampati teased, teased the old man, saying." Old monk, you eat the way the, a cow chews grass. The old shramana was a、uh, certified ahad. His reply was, "Oh, you shouldn't talk about me like that. If you do, you will have to undergo retribution in the future. You'd better repent immediately. Better take it back right away." Gavampati apologized. And so he didn't have to undergo the the retribution of being a cow, but even so, he was endowed with cow-like habits. Ever afterward, his tongue was like a cow's, and he was always chewing his cud and breathing like a cow. Although he was certified to the fruition of ahadship, the Buddha was afraid that people would slander him in turn and say that he too was like a cow, and that such people would then have to bear the retribution of being a cow. For this reason, the Buddha instructed Gavampati to live in the heavens and receive the offerings of the gods, since the gods. All possess the ability to discern past lives; they would not dare to slight him. In the text, Gavampati goes on to explain, the way I created mouth karma was that I slighted a shramana. He teased the monk. Shramana is a Sanskrit word, which means diligent and put into rest, chinsi. A shramana diligently cultivates precepts, samadhi, and wisdom, and puts to rest greed, hatred, and stupidity. In life after life, I've had this cow-cut sickness. 
as my retribution. Sutra, the first common touch means the mind ground Dhammador of the purity of a single flavor. My thought was extinguished. I entered Samadhi and contemplated the awareness of flavor as not having a substance of not being a thing. As a result, my mind transcended all worldly outflows. Commentary, the first common taught me the mind ground Dhammador of the purity of a single flavor, which means the purity of the one mind. When the tongue does not discriminate taste, when there is no conscious mind, then all flavors return to purity. This, then, is cultivating a samadhi of non-discrimination. My thought was extinguished. His conscious mind was quieted, that is, I entered samadhi. He obtained a proper concentration and proper reception, and he contemplated the awareness of flavor as not having a substance and not being a thing. The awareness of taste does not come from the substance of the nose, nor does it come from external objects. As a result, my mind transcended all worldly outflows just in purifying that one thought I got out of the outflows of the world. Sutra, internally I was freed of body and mind, and externally I abandoned the world. I left the three existences far behind, just like a bird released from its cage. I separated from filth and wiped out defilements, and so my Dharma eye became pure, and I accomplished a hardship. The first common satisfied me in person as having ascended to the path beyond learning. Commentary. Internally, I was freed of body and mind. Body and mind were gone. I left them. Externally, I abandoned the world. I forgot about the world as well. I left the three existences far behind. This refers to existence in the realm of design, in the realm of form, and in the formless realm. At that time, I was just like a bird released from its cage. I separated from filth and wiped out defilements, and so my Dharma eye became pure. This means his Dharma eye opened and he accomplished a hardship. The first common satisfied me in person as having ascended to the path beyond learning. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been satisfied to eat, returning flavor and turning awareness around, is the superior method. Commentary. Returning flavors means not making discriminations about them. It is to turn the light to illumine within. Turning awareness around refers to reversing the mindset discriminations of flavors. This is the foremost method. This is the best drama door. Sutra. Bilinda Vatsa rose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, Commentary Bilinda Vatsa's name means leftover habits, you see. This name represents the fact that he still carried with him many habits from ends of former lives. He was an heart who had been satisfied to the fruition, and so when he wanted to cross a river, he could stop the flow of the water at will. In the case of one river, the river spirit was a female, and when he reached the bank, he called out, Little servant, stop the flow. The spirit did as she was told, but she was very put out, though she didn't show it. She did, however, go and complain to the Buddha. I was watching over the flow of the river, and he came to set and said to me, Little servant, stop the flow. He's in a heart. He shouldn't call me that. The Buddha told Bilindavatsa to apologize the river spirit. Apologize to the river spirit. Bilindavatsa put his palms together and said to the to her, "I'm sorry, little servant." At that, the whole assembly of Ahas burst into laughter. Now, why did Bilindavatsa call the river spirit little servant? It was because in past lives the spirit had, in fact, been his servant. He was in the habit of addressing her that way, so that now, even though she was a river spirit, 
he still called her that. The whole reason he had to apologize was because it upset her when he called her little servant. But his habit was so deep that he even called her that when apologizing. Sutra. And I, when I first left home to follow the Buddha and enter the way, I often heard the first common explain that there is nothing in this world that brings happiness. Once, when I was begging in the city, I was reflecting on this Dharma jaw and did not notice a poisonous thorn on the road until it had pricked my foot. My entire body experienced physical pain, but my mind also had an awareness. Though it was aware of strong pain and recognized the feeling of pain, I knew that in my pure heart there was neither pain nor awareness of pain. Commentary When I first left home to follow the Buddha and enter the way, I often heard the first common explain that there is nothing in this world that brings happiness. Many times I listened to the Buddha explain how the things of this world are all suffering, empty, impermanent, and without self. Once, when I was begging in the city, I was reflecting on this Dhamma door and did not notice a poisonous thorn on the road until it had prickled my foot. I was thinking with such intensity about the Dhamma door the first common had taught us that I wasn't paying attention to the road and I stepped on a splinter of wood which wounded my foot. My entire body experienced physical pain, my whole body hurt from it, but my mind also had an awareness. Though it was aware of strong pain and recognized the feeling of pain, I knew that in my pure heart there was neither pain nor awareness of pain. In my pure, original, enlightened mind, there was no pain or any awareness of pain. When I realized that everything was empty and my body and mind became pure, therefore I didn't know who was aware of the pain. Sutra, I also thought, is it possible for one body to have two awarenesses? Having reflected on this for a while, my body and mind were suddenly empty. After 21 days, my outflows disappeared. I accomplished a hardship and received certification in person and a confirm confirmation that I had realized the level beyond learning. Commentary I also thought, is it possible for one body to have two awarenesses? Can I have two simultaneous awarenesses? Can I feel pain on the one hand and on the other hand not be aware of it? No, having reflected on this for a while, I looked into this for a short time. My body and mind were suddenly empty. After 21 days, my outflows disappeared. Within three weeks, all my various outflows turned out to be empty. They were all gone. I accomplished a hardship and received certification in person and a confirmation that I had realized the level beyond learning. The Buddha himself sealed and certified me and gave me confirmation. I realized the fourth version of Ahashib. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration as I have been certified to it. Purifying the awareness and forgetting the body is the superior method. Commentary. The Buddha is asking each of us disciples about the path we took that brought about our initial enlightenment. What I, Pilindavasa, did was to remain intent upon the enlightened mind until it was total and pure and I forgot about my body. This is my Dharma draw of cultivation.